Hi guys, today in this episode we will continue the journey and the saga <laughs> of upgrading this uh, heavy old industrial woodworking router CNC with uh, the UC CNC control system and with new softwares, uh, whatever. Now, today we will do the first cut. <laughs> I have no clue what I'm doing, so this is not a tutorial video, it's really just um, for fun, okay, so... <laughs> Don't follow my advices here, so if I will break my machine and you will break your machine, it's not my fault, okay? So that was the legal notice. Now, so may you remember, but in a previous uh, episodes when I demolished this part, the, the front panel of, of the machine, Accidentally, I broke this 20-something-year-old uh, uh, plastic uh, cover panel. This will be the first job what we will do on this machine. So what I did until now, I just made a really quick uh, sketch in uh, a vector graphic software. In the next episode, I will explain to you guys what kind of softwares I'm using and why. Then I came here and I measured everything exactly with the calipers and with the uh, measure tapes. So then I took all these measurements and I went to the uh, Fusion 360. Uh, yeah, it was it was a really nice try. And I started everything from this point, which is uh, the zero, absolute zero and zero. This was how originally built the machine. So all the home switches and all this uh, thing is is uh, is is built on a way my uh, zero points is in is in this corner somewhere okay may on your machine or other type of machines it's uh, it's a not a good idea to start the sketch from the zero and zero it was pretty simple so just got really just a couple of holes uh, with the exact diameter what i'm looking for uh, everything is nice and uh, white so there is no unfinished um, coordinates and distances so everything is set and then I just uh, pulled up uh, the, the thingy with the five millimeter because this material is exactly five millimeter okay not exactly <laughs> you will understand a little bit later so then of course I came to the cam section of the fusion and then I started to build up my parts so first I will do the boring of course because uh, when the plate is in one piece, it's much more easier to, to pick the holes for the machine. Uh, so the, the plate will not move uh, so much. So all the smallest parts is done now in this first step. And the next job is to cut out this middle section. But of course I set up uh, a little bit of uh, tabs. Not so much, it's just uh, one millimeter high, four millimeter with uh, tabs. Make sure uh, this middle section after the cutout, it's, it's still in place because I cannot use uh, nothing like double side tape or something with this material. So uh, I will keep the middle section in with the tabs. Then I switched uh, to the other contour, which is the outside. Here I made uh, the same uh, setup with the tabs. So again, one millimeter high and four millimeter wide uh, uh, tabs. So let me show you why I applied also tabs on a outside uh, contour, okay? This is the material at the moment what I have. Okay, I don't have uh, anything else which is really close to, to this one. This was like uh, 3.8 millimeter thickness and this is five. All the rest what I have there it's uh, like uh, eight millimeter, uh, 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, really crazy stuff. So this is the closest one what I find. But of course, because I stored it on a really bad way and uh, guys just sit on it and eat on it whatever so then i got this uh, distortion eh? i hope you can you can see eh? so it's a uh, pretty pretty distorted <laughs> material and i did try to glue down to this uh, face with the double side tape now after five minutes it's just click just peeled up 
So this is uh, the trick what I did. So the outside contour uh, plus the thumbs. So the tool will enter here, okay? It was a mistake. I accidentally <laughs> pushed the tool <laughs> to the material. By the mistake of the Fusion software, eh? it was not me. Uh, I will show you. I hope these uh, taps will uh, help me to <laughs> keep down this uh, stock material. It's just a couple of grams even. I think even if I drop my tool on it, maybe you can see, but it's, it's going down. This is a really good uh, scenario to see in real life uh, <laughs> uh, what I can do with this uh, old machine. I hope it will stay in a place. If not, not a big drama because we have here all the holes. Okay, so this is the second reason why I choose to drill the holes uh, first. We will see what's going on. So if I see any problem with this distortion and uh, things want to fly away, of course we will uh, utilize the holes and we will clamp down everything really nicely. Because the final step is of course uh, the chamfering. And I made uh, two toolpaths with it. And somewhere between the contour and between the chamfer, of course, I have to change the tool now. Now, let me explain to you guys why I'm organized uh, this uh, job into two folders. At the moment, I'm using the Fusion free version. Of course, in the future, when I will make some money with this machine, or I don't know, I will cut uh, gold with it or diamond, or I don't know. Then, of course, I will buy the, the Fusion full license, which is a little bit pricey. <laughs> so thank you very much, uh, Autodesk, to keep the Fusion software uh, <laughs> available for the um, hobbyist uh, community. I really, I really appreciate it. So uh, this is my trick how to avoid from the free version limitations. So let me show you what's happened when you try to export from the free version of the Fusion your job when it's containing two changes, okay? So you came here, you say, okay, this is my full setup. And uh, you know what, let's, uh, let's make uh, the simulation, then you will understand. So this is the first tool, okay? And I will use the same tool to cut the inside and the outside contour. And here you can see how, how the taps are made. And then here is the point when we have to do tool change because this tool is a engraver tool, okay? So we have one tool change. If no, I will try to export this G code uh, with the correct uh, post processor. Boom! So this is what you get uh, from the Autodesk as a, <laughs> a little bit of slap into your face. So my solution for this problem, it's, a, it's a not a problem, it's a limitation. Okay, we can understand uh, why Autodesk is doing this. So the trick here is um, I just organized the two different tool into two folder, okay? And in this way, I can come here, click on a folder, and when I stay on this folder now here, I can say, create for me the NC program. Now let me show you something which is, I think it's really important if you are using uh, UCCNC. I didn't figure out what's going on here and why it's happening, maybe because of the free version or I have no clue, but let me show you the thingy. So Fusion software is dropping this line into the G code when you do export with the UCCNC uh, post processor. And this is a really bad thing here because this is telling the UCCNC motion controller to go back to the machine zero, okay? And every time when it's doing this, whatever you put tool inside and uh, you set up your table, whatever, it's, it's the machine is, doesn't care anymore your zeros, it's just Boom, it's just running back to the machine zero, which is a really, really bad thing. I think you can understand what can happen here. 
And this is why I got this small hole here after I even did zero and goes and set up everything. So what, uh, what I have to do here, of course, go to the editing mode, okay? And I have to take out this one and I can take out all this blah, blah, blah. We don't care. So after, after that, of course, uh, the first line is, looks uh, nice and dandy. Everything is fine. And so this is a normal operation. Put your uh, tool in it and then uh, speed up the, the spindle, blah, 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 blah. And then it start to move somewhere in here. Okay. Now, if we go to the UCC and see and we load the file mm, and we do the first drillings operation, boom, everything is looks okay. You see this one? I don't know what's going on. And uh, so what we will do now, First, of course, we will not do uh, <laughs> full zeroing, okay? So we will not uh, uh, cut into the table and into the stock because I have a bad feeling about that part, okay? So uh, let me uh, clamp down the material, make sure it's, it's not uh, flimsy and flying away. So this is how my very expensive clamping solution is working, but it's working really well. No worries. No, my stock is really is touching the, um, the table. And by the way, I have uh, like a 20 millimeter high uh, spoil board under it. So nothing can happen with us. So this is my X0, this is my Y0, and this is my max, which is 250 millimeter, and here is my other max on a X, uh, which is 155 millimeter. So, by the looks, by the eye, it's everything is in the, the stock material, and uh, the tool cannot uh, uh, assess the, the clamping solution. So now we just we fly somewhere, somewhere really close to the Final position, so go to X. Okay, we are really close. We're almost there. And here is a tricky, what I used in the past when we work with these really old fashion uh, <laughs> CNC machines without the arrows and all this, huh? In the 80s, 90s, 90s, it was the 90s. Almost. Uh, minus one. So this should be the real zero. Okay, but because I'm really a fraud <laughs> with the first cut, of course I will not uh, go with this zero. So of course I will elevate the Z only. We go up uh, somewhere here. What happened now? All of my other coordinates are correct. Only the Z is uh, not correct and this will be my new zero so we will cut the air we will not cut nothing else so now this is my new zero and uh, let me cut the air before we go forward i want to try something this pendant for some reason doesn't matter what i set up in a software it's always going to slip in after five seconds or two seconds so i just want to try out what's happening when this pendant is in sleep mode and I press the, the e-stop, okay? <laughs> you will see, it's, it's really quickly going back to sleep mode. Boom, that's it. It was like uh, four seconds. So, if I touch the e-stop, yeah, okay, good, good. It's about a half second delay or something. Uh, I think this test was super, super important. So let me undo the e-stop. And really interesting, but after you undo the e-stop, is again is going back to sleep mode. Hmm. Let's do cycle start. Boom. Cool and on. And yes, definitely. And I want to see where the the head is stopping after. It should stop on the zero, not on the machine zero. If it's stopping on the machine zero, and then I have to look after it in the file and again edit it out. Now this is the other thing what um, the Fusion is doing uh, when you are using the free version. It's uh, not allow you to utilize the rapid uh, 
movements. So all of your movements is, <laughs> is happening with uh, half speed or uh, only with the uh, machine speed. I think we are okay. I really, I just want to see what's happening on the end of the process. Mm. Now this is what happened. So this is what I don't want. Okay, so so this is exactly what happened as uh, the cold uh, tore to this machine. And this is really freak me out <laughs> about machine. So it's like a Terminator is doing uh, what the program is uh, telling him. So uh, this is what happened. So this is this G53G0Z0, which is telling the machine to go to the machine coordinate Z0. And it's ended up uh, in some really crazy, you see? So this is the machine coordinate, now on zero, but uh, like in real life, in work uh, coordinate is in minus 80. Thank you very much. I just uh, messed up my uh, stock material. <laughs> it was so expensive, it was free. Uh, I definitely have to watch out for these uh, extra lines uh, from the fusion export, make sure this cannot happen. I think we still can use the, um, the stock, nothing wrong with it. So if I move the zero position to somewhere, let's say here, okay, and then we still have enough material to travel to the right side, okay. Uh, this uh, direction, it's, it's still safe with that one, yeah, it be, be still okay. So what we will do now, we will do a new zeroing out, and of course, I will take out this line from the G code. And so we just have to remove that line and we are done. So now, yeah, it's disappeared. If you believe or not, but this is a very good thing. The UCC and looks to me, uh, it's a very good software because what you see on the simulation, exactly this is what you will get. So no, I don't have this uh, crazy 50 something millimeter deep boom <laughs> machine destroyer uh, toolpath. Tool path. So now uh, I can do real zeroing. So first for that, of course, I will do like uh, home all, reset all the motors and all the heights. And then from that machine zero uh, coordinate, we will go back uh, to the material and we will do a correct uh, zero. Believe me, now we will do a cut. Yeah, promise. And we will see. Ha! Now we are touching the material, really, just very, barely, barely softly. Okay, this is my <laughs> final zero before we destroy the machine, so this is my zero and we should start the job. Now, the other question is where the chips will fly? <laughs> because this is a one flute bit and it's really famous about uh, flying the chips everywhere. So, what should happen now? The bit should travel up and go to the first uh, whole position and everything should be fine and dandy. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Ah! But I don't understand why the, the first uh, was here, why it's not uh, went up to the safety uh, height. You know what, I don't care this uh, issue now, but I learned again something. So we should find this error in a code so really, I have no clue what the Fusion is doing in the free version. This should not happen. So I told uh, in a software, I remember, I told uh, this is the starting point and do like a safety travel, like 10 millimeter. And I don't know why it's drilling so deeply into the wood. It's really weird. Maybe the material is not uh, five millimeter at all, huh? So. No, it's, yeah, it's a little bit less. You know what? I think it's okay. So let me check the chips. 
Okay, it's definitely not melted yet. So this is a very important. Yeah, it's flying everywhere. I don't like this stuff flying away. Yeah, I have no taps at all. So yeah, yeah. I think we have to stop it. So the one millimeter tap uh, height is not enough in this uh, soft uh, plastic material. So in some places, yeah, I still have the tap like a very, very tiny bit uh, remains, but uh, no, definitely. Uh, in the future, when I will use this uh, stock, I have to make like uh, at least two millimeter. So what happened, because we have this error in the material, Believe me, I'm not stupid. I measured exactly five millimeter yesterday and today this is only 4.8. So my big uh, stock is there. Probably the side of the stock is uh, uh, thicker than, than the middle section. So um, what I will do now, of course, I will drive some screws into this hose, make sure the section cannot fly away like uh, this uh, small middle section, okay? So this is my screws in the stock. No worries, the, the middle section is still down on the spoil board. So we can continue the job. Boom. Now here is the result. Um, I think we are okay, but I will not do the chamfering with the machine, no, big no, because of this uh, half millimeter error. So I'm not sure if this one millimeter chamfer, what I planned in a fusion, it will be enough to do the chamfering on our side. And if we have other uh, hided uh, <laughs> uh, code, then maybe I can uh, destroy and demolish my chamfer tool. So definitely I have to look after the post-processor in the Fusion software, what's going on? I made this one, okay, what is this error here? Or maybe I did a wrong uh, setup in a software, can be, no problem, so. Yeah, now it's fast, yeah, you see. No worries. So we can go there. And of course, make sure I'm not uh, drilling into my hand like uh, <clears throat> half a year ago. Boom. And now the machine is safe. Okay. And we can work on our parts and we can see if it's fit to here or not. Ah, it's, I think it's, I think it's nice. Yeah, it, it's the, the edges are sharp. Only the surface quality here is not really good. So definitely I have to play a little bit with the spindle speed and the feed uh, rate and whatnot. And yeah, I see here some melts around the, the tab processing. So anyway, I think I'm lucky because this part is uh, symmetric. So what I can do now to fix this uh, beautiful uh, job, what I did here, I just flip the part and done. Ta-da, even I, even I, yeah, I like more this surface. This is matte and this is uh, shiny. So it looks like really shiny, shiny. This part is looks like uh, Chinese matte. <laughs> so let me check this part. Nothing scientific here now. It's just really by the eyeballs. It looks to me. Okay. So here is uh, the speed controller panel. And I will drop like this. Okay, it's a little bit, okay, it's a little bit uh, sluggish. No, I, I think it's okay. Look, look the precision, eh? Look at this. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. Now what I learned today, <laughs> next time I have to check uh, my uh, non-metallic stock material a little bit better. Of course, those the things like plastic, polycarbonate, all those, uh, uh, soft materials, they're not so accurate eh? on a thickness, so it's not like a class A metal sheet. Uh, so definitely uh, in the next time, after I cut out the rough uh, stock, I have to check uh, the thickness uh, a little bit more precisely. 
the next thing what I learned is uh, this um, 20 something euro German tomb uh, caliper it's not good enough anymore for this kind of job so I will look uh, after some nice Mitu Toyo whatever uh, calipers and uh, gauges and uh, thickness uh, depth gauges micrometers uh, whatever so definitely I have to upgrade my uh, metrology <laughs> system then the next one what I learned today there is no more uh, excuse tomorrow I have to start to fix my <laughs> dust <laughs> collection system. The next one what I learned is uh, when I'm using um, free software okay I should double check everything what the free software is doing uh, I have to figure out what's going on with this G53 blah 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 uh, lines definitely I have to check uh, what the Fusion 360 is doing when uh, I'm doing drilling operation like a first operation so maybe the the starting zero position with the lead in is not a correct way to do the next what I learned today this is not good if, if I have this very expensive uh, wireless pendant here so tomorrow I will stick some uh, magnet to it so and finally I will drop this one to somewhere here or here originally this machine had here some kind of uh, metallic console for the pendant I think uh, I will drop it back and we, I will bend it a little bit and this is what I will use to to, to, to hold uh, uh, my pendant here and uh, what is? Uh, nothing uh, now I have to clean up my place this, this thing is just everywhere it looks like a, a dump of uh, mice eh? <laughs> or a rat oh my god like uh, my CNC is in New York. Ta-da! Here it is, my new machine control panel, which is made by the machine, on the machine. Bang! Yay! It's working. Very nice. And the most important is the e-stop. So this, uh, ah, about e-stops. Um, this e-stop is completely different what we have in a software or on the pendant so this one is only controlling the UCCNC software and of course the, um, the motion controller so the AXBBE something AXBBE, yeah, this is the name now this one is a main uh, e-stop button so this will shut down everything minus the computer, of course so, um, may you remember I made a video like uh, nine years ago or ten years ago, I don't know, maybe eight years ago, about a power sequencer, what we find in some old uh, rack video editing cabinet. So let me explain to you what is this here. This boxy is containing um, a electronic, a relay, and a negative thermal coefficient uh, resistor. So, and uh, I learned a lot from that device you, you should look uh, after this video on my channel and uh, I think I will apply some kind of solution from that uh, power sequencer here uh, make sure when uh, I do like a panic e-stop yeah, because this is absolutely for a panic e-stop so this is shutting down everything so there is no electricity at all on any part of the machines. With the power sequencer you can save the very fine electronics and your motors from the inrush current. Yeah, this is the correct uh, name and correct uh, terminology. I will look uh, on uh, eBay or maybe on uh, Wallapop or something to find some similar uh, machine, device and uh, I will install it into the new box uh, because I'm really not so happy about this uh, very brutal ISTA because this one is uh, shutting down completely the whole uh, electric uh, system here with the, with the relay so there is no sequencing and there is no inrush uh, current protection I think uh, uh, today we did good minus these uh, very small uh, faults I hope you guys enjoyed see you next time